Let's consider just a few issues related to India's macroeconomic stability. One striking feature of Indian economic history since independence is that the country really hasn't had truly major financial crises. They haven't had hyperinflations, there hasn't been a complete collapse of the banking system, and overall, if you compare the volatility of Indian economic performance, you will find that in Latin America, as is pictured in this photo, which covers Argentina and Brazil, well, the economic volatility has been much higher in Latin America than in India. There have been some smaller scale economic crises in India, and some of the best known of those are listed here. 1991 in particular is the most recent, and it's known as a time that spurred the Indian government to institute some significant reforms. What's striking about Indian macroeconomic crises is that they tend to be crises of foreign exchange, and they tend to have something to do with balance of payments problems. That is, periodically in the past, India has more or less run out of having enough foreign exchange to continue conducting its economic affairs as it had been expecting to. In the 1991 financial crisis, the country really did virtually run out of foreign exchange. They had to negotiate an emergency loan of foreign exchange from the IMF, and in order to get that loan, they had to take the very dramatic step of actually airlifting gold to the IMF. So there are two main stylized facts here. The first is relative macro stability, and the second is periodic shortages of foreign exchange. They actually fit together in somewhat of a unified framework. Here's a way to think about how those two phenomena fit together. In general, India has less foreign direct investment than a lot of other developing nations, especially in its earlier years. This is in large part because of law and regulation. We've talked about this in some of the other videos. A high percentage of Indian banks are state-run, and in general, Indian capital markets are simply much less dynamic than a lot of the capital markets of other developing nations. So what we have is that India periodically, in its post-independent history, just didn't have that much in the way of foreign direct investment and also foreign exchange. So they had, in a way, less to lose. This made the country less volatile in macroeconomic terms, but it also meant that the levels the level of per capita income, the level of wages, the level of economic activity was lower. So you can think of India as having instituted policies which led to more stability because of greater reliance on domestic capital markets, but also less dynamism and lower levels for wages and economic output. We can contrast India with, say, South Korea. In the late 1990s, South Korea was very much a victim of the Asian financial crisis. Foreign capital very much flowed out of South Korea, and there was a kind of emergency panic in capital markets. And this, of course, led to a lot of volatility in South Korea. But at the same time, that foreign capital, in many ways, had contributed to building up the South Korean economy, and South Korean wages and economic output per capita are, of course, much higher than those of India. The point, ultimately, is that India's macroeconomic stability has come at a price. That foreign capital can be volatile, it may in some cases flee a country too readily, it can lead to some macroeconomic instability, but it also brings some significant benefits in terms of economic growth. I've been considering just one angle to India's macroeconomic crises. If you'd like to read more on the topic, you can start by just googling India macroeconomic crisis. If you want to know more about a particular crisis, we'll just add in the specific years, referring back to an earlier slide, and if you'd like a book on the topic, I'll again recommend the excellent work by Arvind Panagaria called India, the Emerging Giant.